scale of one inch equals 20 feet. I'm one of the engineers who works on zoning for the city. Look, here's the commercial zone, the residential zone, and the industrial zone by the Potomac River. I recognize the engineering university that I attend by the SkyTran station. And here's the end of the Bell where I like to shot me by the Maglev subway. Is that building made out of a soda bottle? Yes. We used recycled material for the model to keep things green. This tub faucet is conveniently the same shape as our Soul Power Insoles facility. What's he doing? Can't you see? I'm fighting Darth Vader. Ever since they established a virtual reality system to let people like myself work from home, I found I can do everything using virtual reality. What's the problem? More. It's gotten a little out of shape. What? Look at me. I'm all muscles and a six pack. Take those off. Hey, where'd my six pack go? And what planet is this? Tatooine? Yavin 4? It's called Planet Earth. You know, everyone else visits public spaces around Sosai City every day. You're the only one still stuck in a virtual reality bubble. This used to be a common problem. Eleven years ago, the city implemented the virtual reality work from home program to alleviate traffic congestion and the skyrocketing cost of office space. 54% of citizens used the program. It was so successful that Sosai City no longer needed several of its office buildings or roadways. Wow. So the main problem was that the city had a bunch of abandoned structures and the citizens weren't interacting or exercising. What did they do? The city council used the engineering process to solve the problem. After brainstorming, they came up with the idea of redeveloping brownfield sites into public spaces. They created trial public spaces and then had a consulting firm evaluate their solution. They found that the public spaces were successful in increasing social interaction and motivating citizens to exercise, but there is one concern. What was the issue? The public spaces were expensive to build, so the city iterated on their solution by partnering with businesses like CycleSphere Incorporated to help with the cost. The city donates unused structures for the companies to use and provides tax incentives. It's the optimal solution. Oh, is that why there are a lot of CycleSphere events and advertisements by the Aquaponic Gardens? I like to go jogging there. That's right. Did you know that used to be a highway underpass? What? How would you turn a highway underpass into an aquaponic garden? Did you use the force? We used something more powerful than the force. Engineering. The first step was to contract microbial engineers to develop organisms that would eliminate toxins in the asphalt. Once that was done, the underpass was lined with geopolymer concrete to seal out any remaining contaminants. Then the lower section was filled with water, bluegill fish, and romaine lettuce grown aquaponically, and the upper section was planted with trees and flowers. I noticed the building by our condo complex used to be an old power plant. Did you use a similar process to redevelop it as well? Yes, we also used microbes to clean up the oil spills and PCBs around the old power plant. Structural engineers designed in skylights to bring natural lighting to the lower sections of the building. They even reused the cooling weirs to irrigate the surrounding landscape. Now, the power plant is a multi-use complex, including shops, a gym, a playground, and a pool. The Dancing Fountains Plaza ties together the redeveloped power plant and several nearby condo buildings. The engineers did a great job. Why, thank you. In addition to structural and microbial engineers, the most important role was the municipal engineers that came up with a conversion concept and designed how these public spaces network to each other using our SkyTram and Maglev subway. These public spaces look pretty cool. What kind of activities go on there? The amphitheater by the Dancing Fountains hosts all sorts of cultural events like concerts and plays. And the aquaponic gardens are a great place to walk and commune with nature. What are those little moon-shaped things on the model? That's no moon. It's a cycle sphere. What's a cycle sphere? Cycle spheres seat up to four people who pedal generators inside the sphere. The generators power thousands of superconducting electromagnets that drive the sphere forward, similar to the Maglev subway. They're extremely safe, since they can't tip over, and are designed to bump into other objects without damage. You can even ride them in snow. Hey, you could be an engineer. Do they have an outlet to keep my smartphone charged? There's a better solution for that. Soul power insoles. These insoles in my shoe actually generate electricity. Did they create enough power to destroy an entire planet? Not quite. 
but they do keep my smartphone charged to conduct with strips of my clothing. The insoles contain a piezoelectric based material that converts kinetic energy into electrical energy. The insoles generate 230 milliwatts per hour of walking for the average citizen. Wow, these soul power insoles and cycle spheres really motivate me to visit these cool public spaces and get some exercise. Although it sounds like the companies have more control over the public spaces than the city. Yes, that was one of the trade-offs, but the city felt it was worth it to be able to create more public spaces without raising taxes. And they needed to save funds to address the top risk of the public spaces. I bet I know what that is. Since the public spaces are designed to attract large numbers of people, the top concern is terrorist attacks. I actually worked on software that uses citywide surveillance systems to detect potential threats and proactively notifies police. I like how safe it is in Sosai City. It's a great place to live. Even the air seems fresher. That's because all of our electricity comes from clean sources, such as photovoltaic cells on all the buildings. And the trees in the public spaces help clean the air as well. Hey, didn't you work in some software for the health department too? Yes, I did. The free medical bracelets will monitor your health and even call for an ambulance if an emergency like a heart attack is detected. In fact, my bracelet is telling me I need to get some more exercise. Do you want to take a cycle suit right now? Yeah, let's go before I start to look like Jabba the Hutt. Great job. Well done, thank you. Um, could you repeat again? You mentioned it briefly, but can you, can you share with everyone what trade-offs or compromises you experienced while making this project? Um, so Sosai City, the city had to give up some control over our public spaces when we partnered with businesses because we needed the businesses to pay for and fund and also host events at our public spaces. Another trade-off we had is we had to decide whether to repurpose the power plant or just completely bulldoze it and build on top. But the city decided to repurpose, be, repurpose it because it uh, keeps the historical significance and it also allow citizens to um, see what it looked like before. So although um, cleaning up pollutants is expensive, we decided it was better for our city and for the environment. So how did your team's vision of your future city evolve and change as you moved through the process? So one thing that we kind of changed throughout the process is um, we were thinking of converting the subway into a public space instead of the roadways. But then we uh, considered that idea, but then we thought that the subways were just so efficient that um, the cars would actually be the ones to go before the subways. And so uh, that was one thing that we changed. We also just learned a lot together uh, between uh, the beginning and now about the project, through the project. And actually, in the beginning, we thought about using virtual reality in our public spaces. But then after going through the brainstorming process and thinking of other ideas, we decided that virtual reality actually would cause a big problem with, since citizens wouldn't get social interaction or exercise. You can kind of see this today because uh, my parents are always telling me to get off my cell phone, to go out outside <laughs> and play with people, with all my friends. Um, but we think that's just going to keep getting worse in the future. And if you've ever seen like the movie Wall-E, uh, there's actually like virtual reality. Everyone's in their virtual reality world. And so, I mean, Pixar even noticed this was a problem. In, in your model, there's a fire station, but it's a cylindrical shaped building. Can you explain how it works? The, fire, the fire station that you have in the middle yes. is a cylindrical building. How does it work? What, what, what is the function of that building as a fire station? Um, that's where the drones that put out fires are kept and the offices, I mean, where the firemen are um, in the city. An another question. What type of communications plan do you have for your city? Um, a lot of our citizens uh, do communicate through like virtual reality and all of our communication systems are wireless. Um, you can see on our cell tower right here that we predict that in the future, right now we have about uh, 4G uh, in cellular um, like data, but we predict that in the future you're going to have 22G uh, data, <laughs> and so it's going to be a lot faster. Um, our health bracelets actually alert citizens if there's a natural disaster like a hurricane since we're in eastern Virginia, so that's another form of communication in society. Can you explain a little bit more about your underground structure? You know, how they really work? 
on on the right hand side, I mean right underneath the, uh, you know, the, the garden. Um. So this is our underground mall. Right. Um. And so like here's like a skylight and the underground mall, and then we have our Maglev subway that runs along the bottom of it. We actually went to a repurposed power plant at Austin, where they converted a power plant into um, a public space and a condo building. And so they taught us that it was important to have skylights get natural lighting into the building in the under parts of the area. And so um, that was a really good experience. Um, over here is our Maglev subway station. Um, so citizens can use that um, to travel farther distances within our city. And how do you promote exercise and recreation? How do you get people out outside and enjoy what you've built? Uh, one way we get people outside is our uh, cycle spheres. And uh, you, they pedal generators, so it really gets them lots of exercise. Also, our public spaces are really innovative, I think. And so I believe that the citizens will just come out and to just see the public spaces, come out to see concerts, or like Tiffany said, it was trying out a cycle sphere. Um, and another thing that encourages citizens to get exercise is our soul power insoles, which will charge their cell phones like while they're <laughs> jogging or walking around Suicide City. Also, our dancing fountains really promotes uh, cultural events like festivals, concerts, and plays, and really uh, motivates citizens to interact with each other. Um, how do you control power in the city? I mean, like, you have great power sources, but in case of an emergency that would stop all of this, what's your uh, alternative power source for your city? So uh, we have a decentralized power grid. So if one of our... Um, if one of the um, if the like if the power were to fail in one of the sections of our city, then the other part then the other parts of our city could share the power with it. 